And here we are for the second casting game in the Board Game Geek second tournament. Today with me is uh, Erwin, or otherwise known as the Sacred Voice, who is going Hello. to be who is going to be helping me cast this tournament. Hello there. Hey, yeah, uh, hey, yeah. Uh. Um, we now have the game between Nerdicat and Piscatella. Um, both I know have been playing quite a bit uh, Android Netrunner, so we're hoping for an interesting match this time. Yeah, I've played Nerdicat before, I think, so this will be a nice second view. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume both of them are playing with the latest version, so this is good. We're yeah. going to see uh, how the new stuff works. And we're going straight into the game, no delays here. It's going to be a Gabriel vs. Wayland. What do you think about this uh, matchup? I think this is a fairly. I think, uh, you know, Criminal still seems to remain quite strong in the current meta, so it's no surprise to see it. I think, I, I imagine there'll be quite a few Criminal runners in the tournament overall. Yeah, me too. It's um, at the moment the most popular one, and uh, they keep, seem to be getting the best toys in Cyber Exodus as well. Yeah, yeah. This is a fairly standard opening, I think you'd say. Yeah, Piscatella has a very good uh, start, I think. Two eyes and a scored stir just in case the criminal messes up. Plus yeah, 10 credits. A plenty of credits, but also the nice, easy, easy, easy to score agendas there. Mm. It's nice to have a single round sort of thing. He's already played the toll booth on the uh, headquarters, so he definitely doesn't want uh, our friend getting in it for cheap. Uh, it'd be bad. I mean, he. The thing here, though, is that if you run, you can't res both eyes this round, so, mm -hmm. I mean, if they run into both, one's going to have to not get res. There we go. So he's going straight for the agenda to make sure he can res that archer later. Well, he drew posted bounty, so I think he wants to avoid having too many in his hands. But he does have Tollbooth protecting it, so it's not yeah. critical. Yeah, it's not, but he never knows when the uh, Gabriel can play that uh, sneak torpedo. Yeah, yeah, and that could be really devastating. You couldn't exactly. point straight away. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, and there he goes with the uh, Femme Fatale. That old booth is really going to be worthless in a few minutes. Yeah. It's interesting, he didn't run in the opening round, so be nice to... Yeah, I'm surprised his uh, Piscatale is playing very, very safe. It's not at all the way uh, most criminals do. I'm, I'm a big fan of the... With the hardcore, just running with nothing, see what happens. Yeah, you really want to be running as early as possible, especially if you have a forged activation orders in your hand. Yeah. You, what and he should, you, if he ran, sorry, if he ran R and D and he had uh, Resident Enigma, and he then played FAO on the uh, Tollbooth, he would have wiped Tollbooth out on first turn. Yeah, yeah. So now that the uh, Dedicate has a master uh, 15 credits, it's uh, uh, forged activation orders is not that useful anymore. Well, Nerdy Cat's iced up archive, so I think your bait is going to be less a threat. Mm. Let's see what he's protecting it with. Just a nice wall, nothing crazy. Mm. I'm not uh, impressed with a very slow play from the criminal. The criminal is stronger at the start of the game. He needs to be running immediately. Yeah, really, really get in, you know, force the corporation to spend some money here. Absolutely. Especially when you have your... Um, Desperado. Uh, Desperado out. I mean, uh, yeah. just make those walls, raise those walls, keep the, the corporation on their toes. If the corporation has so much money. But he's holding a compromised employee as well, so he could be generating some extra money from Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. The problem is the corporation having a lot of money is that um, they can raise whatever they feel more afraid of. And yeah. um, if, for example, they manage to play their agenda on a remote server, and you haven't run on their HQ yet, then they can protect the remote server. But if you had run the HQ first, and they had to protect it, that means that they won't have money to raise the remote server, so they have to keep the agenda in hand. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it'd be interesting to see if he was to run the central servers, and then make a sort of run on remote in a hope that he could res enough ice on the central servers that he wouldn't, that, you know, um, that Renerdy Cat wouldn't have enough money to res all the ice on his remote. But, exactly. Maybe he's afraid of an archer, but at the moment he has no program, so... I'm not sure exactly yeah. what his uh, fear is. Well, he's got Gordian Blade now. Mm. Gordian Blade would be really nice against the two Codebreakers, but uh, Tollbooth will be handled quite handily by the uh, Femme Fatale. Yeah. Mm. Although there are a few Enigmas wandering around, so... Yeah, I don't know. 
I see two enigmas, two are to right. Okay. Plenty, plenty of opportunities. Now uh, there goes Armitage. Mm -hmm. Burnt through that Armitage quite quickly. I mean, I'm always a quite a sort of slow Armitage user. I tend to have it out sort of for a, quite a while and sort of take bits as I need them, but... That's the way, I mean, um, you, sh you should only stockpile credits if you know that you can't really get anywhere for yeah. a purpose and use that stockpile to make a big run on the R&D as soon as the agenda drops. Yeah, it's that, that sort of like middle to late stage of the game where it's too difficult, too expensive to make regular runs on anything, so you've got yep, to sort of yep. hold back. Uh, I'm wondering what Piscatella is doing, is he thinking? Probably just, he's probably decided he needs to shift gear now and just think about where he's going to start making his runs. He's taking a draw. Mm -hmm. Yet more money for him. Yep. Runless round so far. Back to Nerdy Cat. Let's see if this strategy will pay off. I've never Ooh, seen a slow criminal like this. Uh, it'd be interesting. But, uh, Nerdy Cat's got a melange now, so unless... You know, unless... This Catella picks up the pace, that Milan should really, as if, as if he even needs any more credits. <laughs> mm. Well, he does need, he has quite a lot of unrest dice, he can't trace them all yeah. for free. But it's going to really help you, oh, and he has two Scorchers in his hand. I mean, before he drew Milan there, he was probably thinking, I mean, because here, posted bounty into Scorchers would be quite a... So yeah, wha got decoy. yeah, what I'm really expecting is that he will um, pass Melan's away. And maybe try to uh, play that posted bounty. I'm not sure how he can get around the decoy though. Yeah, I mean you could... Um, if you... Uh, oh no, that doesn't work, no. Is he going to FAO? That's a very bad choice if he does it. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, oh, he has FAO. That's, you should... To the viewers, you should... This is not a really good thing you want to be doing. You want to FAO once you've drained yeah, you the corporation out of money. Yeah, you want to make sure you kill something. Yeah, I mean, FAO, okay, you can raise something so it doesn't hurt you as much, but it's barely worth it. You F just run into it, yeah. Especially first turn FAO, with the corporation playing two eyes. You run on where you want to run less. For example, in the case of criminal, you run on R&D. Hope he, yeah. he raises R&D and then you FAO the headquarters. Yeah. Almost always, you will manage to trust it. And if not, if you uh, if he doesn't raise uh, R and D, hey, you go to see a card for free. Yeah, you see, I'm actually quite I'm, not, I'm quite ambivalent about FAO. I always find it a little bit because I always draw it in the middle of the game and think, oh, <laughs> what am I going to do with this now? I'm always like, Ugh. it's a card I never want to draw, but it's very strange. Problem is that um, FAO is so strong at the start of the game. It's if you get one or two FAOs at the start of the game, you can really cramp the the style of the corporation. He goes straight for the corroder. So let's see if he he, he can imagine what's behind that enigma. It's amazing. Well, it's not just that, but I think what we're seeing here is he might be about to you know put the full. Maybe he's going to try and put out his all of his breakers in like one round and then just be like take the corporation by so much surprise they won't know where to block first. I wonder if he will. I mean, uh, if he tries to play the. Um, Femme Fatale, what, you're going to play it blind? Yeah, this is true, but I, you know, he could put, if you put Gordian Blade and Corroder out here, and then he had maybe a third Sentry Breaker like Ninja, if you play them all in one round, the corporation's like, oh, weaknesses everywhere, where do I start? So it could panic them. Maybe, maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure I'd like this idea. Now basically he betrays that he can break into that melange. Yeah. Uh, he has gone for the breakers all in one. Mm. I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm liking this play, because uh, in my case, for example, I would have played a compromise deploy. I'm actually surprised he didn't play the Compromise Deploy before playing the FAO. That would have been one extra credit. Yeah, but hey -ho. I mean, let's have to see what happens, I guess. So... I mean, you know, Compromise Deploy at the start of the game is really powerful. That's like 10 yeah. credits during the course of the game. And the soft link is invaluable in the current meta, so... Mm -hmm. Keep drawing, no. But my lance there is waiting, now. come on, break through. Oh, go for! We're willing him on. <laughs> what is he going to do? Oh, come on! Don't tell me he's just going. I really hope he does it on the headquarters at least. No. Uh, for the second one. No. Oh my my my! This will be interesting. Oh, uh, that was such a waste. 
Well, he has guaranteed though. Is he has guaranteed that he can always at the moment that remote server is never safe. So yes, but it's such a waste. He just wasted nine credits. I know, I know, but and on a night that the corporation is not even going to raise anymore. What you want to do with uh, with uh, this little lady is um, get her down, uh, uh, make the corporation raise his very important eyes, like a shadow yeah. or a toll booth, and then play her. Yeah, and then, you know, eliminate that advantage. That now that the there. corporation is laughing himself all the way to the bank, he got to use, uh, <laughs> they got to use Melaza two times, and he then uh, they, they don't care anymore about that server, who cares? I think there's a good chance he'll use it a third time here. Oh, he has got a lot of cards at the moment. There you go. Oh, there he goes. And seeing the corporation now knows how afraid the uh, runner is. Yeah. But, well, that's... yeah. Um, I'm just taking a look at the corporation side. Still still two agendas, still Scorched Earth. He's in a really good... he's in a solid position here, though. Very, so. very solid, very solid. This Gordian Blade costs, oh, what is it, three, four, five, about four plus the other three, seven to get through to through Yeah, well, to, but to, it will cost him four to get through the Enigma, or three if he regrants with his last click. It's not a big deal. But I'm thinking about the Tollboot, because if he was to start running with... All right, it, to Tollboot, yeah, it's seven. It's but seven. then minus two, because obviously Gabriel gets a... Three, and also Desperado, so actually, it's still only four to get him to HQ, so... Yeah, yeah. It's basically the uh, ability of Gabriel will pay for the cost of the enigma of the toll booth. Yeah. But imagine using uh, the Femme Fatale on the toll booth. I would so have been. Mr. just picked up Fast Creek Carapace here. Okay, so he's going to make sure that he's not flatlined at least. But um, oh, there it goes. it's such a slow game from him. Hmm. I you mean, you see where this goes. he just lets the Melanze one more turn. Why? I mean, the score is only 1-0 at the moment, so it's not beyond saving, but giving the corporation this much advantage is interesting. Mm. Risky. What is Nerdicat looking for? That's quite interesting. I mean, I think Nerdicat could probably go ahead and score posted bounty here. Or Absolutely. Because there's, you know, there's no, the class three carapace out, holding it for Scorched Earth is becoming, you know, more and more redundant, so... Well, to be fair, at this point, I wouldn't have even drawn a card, I would have used my lance one more time, I would have discarded uh, some of these uh, cards, I don't think uh, it's worth even trying for a Scorched Earth victory anymore, I would have just grabbed, discarded them. Mm. And then, um, just uh, gone through for an agenda victory. But I guess, I mean, we don't know, he might have Power Grid Overload in his deck, so, you know, he mm. might still be relying on that. I would so. be really surprised. Also, Power yeah. Grid Overload is, is another reason why you want to be melancing a lot. That because Plus Crit, loads, yeah, yeah. that Plus Crit is expensive to trash. Yeah, but I think it's probably, I think he's in a very safe position here. This Catel mm. has gone to draw. But E3. Feedback. Why E3 in the deck? Is he a want to get... Something to fight against uh, the Bioroids. I mean, with Peacock or Aurora, you can almost justify yeah, yeah. Three, that, but here... That's in, um, indeed, that's in my um, criminal deck, where I'm playing with only the uh, natural uh, breakers, because I've used my influence elsewhere. And yeah, the E3 exactly, makes sense yeah. there. Yeah, because it obviously it will save you an extra one on everything you have to break. There we go, security so subcontract. He could have even used that to trust that ice. Uh, he needs to be res though. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, very strange. I'm never sure what I think about security subcontract. I know it wasn't, it didn't receive a lot of love from, from the meta, but... It's going to be something that goes up in importance as the game goes on? Mm, I'm not absolutely sure. It's, um, it, it's tough to tell because um, it's very useful if you get parasites and stuff in, against you. Yeah. But... Um, most often I'm not, it's not that worth it. First run here, and he'd used it to get the money off bank job. Mm. Very, very conservative game from Scatella. I think that's the first run we've seen yet. Uh, yes, actually yes, you are right. What's he going to do? I mean, is he going to run? Ah, I see, yes, that's what I've of course. Ah, oh, right, I thought the other uh, uplink was the satellite. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, they use easy marker and follow it up with Piscatella. It does seem that Piscatella is really afraid of running. I mean, they the... Well, now he knows he can probably get, you know, obviously he can get through this Chum and Enigma combination. Yeah, yeah. But uh, most of the time, it's not a disaster. It's not a disaster to run. Even if you, uh, you hit... Especially at the start of the game, there's n almost nothing that can really hurt you. The katana is yeah. the most scary thing you can hit on. And it's unlikely that you'll see one in Wayland. I mean, I think that Neuro Katana's an excellent splash for Wayland. I don't know why. They've got a lot of... I mean, they're, they're a lot, they need, they've got a lot of weak eyes. But I I, I'm a big fan of Neuro Katana, I must say. A really big fan. <laughs> hmm. it's it doesn't work very well in Zitecki because everybody expects it. That's yeah. the problem. It's like yeah. yet another ice that is better than everybody else, but it's uh, but it's in Teki. Yeah. Hadrian's wall there. That's an interesting place to put it. Well, probably he's just preparing his next fort and wants to pre prevent that ba those bank jobs. I think he's decided he can hang on to Malange pretty much full time now. So. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we haven't. We've only seen the one run, and that was the bank job. So. Yeah. I mean. With Enigma on with Enigma on R and D here, he could be looking at the top card pretty much every go for almost nothing. Yeah. I really, I don't understand why you know, the the um, why being so afraid to run something without knowing every ice. I mean, at this stage, obviously you've got to think that there's an archer somewhere. But you know. Yeah, but I mean, got the money if that happens, if that happens, if the, the worst comes to worst, he can still. Pay for it, if he has yeah. to. But mm. that's yet another reason why you don't want to uh, put your Femme Fatale without any reason. You want to keep her. Go for the Melange now. Mm -hmm. Too little, too late in my opinion. No, I was just thinking that. <laughs> Let's see if he will remember that uh, you don't have to break the charm in this case. Yeah. It's cheaper to just break the... Uh... The Enigma, yeah. I mean, it does give it plus two strength. It doesn't it's matter because it's anyway yeah. breaking the Enigma. The plus yeah, two strength is the only thing you need. But basically, if you break some, you, ba you, you waste one more click, one more credit. In total. Let me think. Oh, come on. That's not a difficult choice. I've just noticed he does have Sneak Door Beta, though there's quite an... You know, Ice has gone up more on Archive. So. While well, this resolves, um, what do you think the what, what do you think the most likely candidates for uh, Nerdy Cat to use his Project Atlas tokens for? If he was the over advanced Project Atlas, hmm. thing, what would he what would he out of his deck? What would you like to pull out here? I would probably suspect. Not but absolutely sure. I mean, a, fl a flatline victory at this point is very difficult. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, you need to be able to use all three of your scored stats and tag him twice, basically. So he would need to be able to play Posted Bounty and then a CEA Source and then two scores third and catch him with three cards in his hand. Yeah. So that's very difficult. In that case, I probably would use Project Atlas for more ice. Because yeah, I was thinking for more ice, probably. Because it's, it's quite a lot of weak ice out at the moment. Mm. Oh, actually, Hadrian's Wall and Tollbooth, they're both very strong. But... Yeah, but I mean, put two, two Hadrian's Wall on one server. Mm. and uh, yes. Well, he hasn't seen many ice for a while either, so... Or even put a, a, an archer. Even an archer at this point will really hurt uh, Piscatella with because the only breaker he has is the uh, Femme Fatale. Yeah. That's a nightmare to boost. I mean, that's going to cost him two, four, six, eight, eight just to get to strength. I think. Yeah, I mean. twelve in total to break everything. It's very painful. But at that point, I think with Nerdy Cap, with the amount of credits he has, if he runs into an archer here, I think he's just going to be like, look, just just give give the guy the two credits. <laughs> I won't bother breaking. <laughs> Although it is one credit to get two, so... Yeah. He doesn't care about that uh, fort. I'm guessing he's going to try trashing all the uh, ice. Yeah, there goes that sum. As if he needs the money, though. I mean, why? Why, why just trust everything? He... I guess just... If he knows that, I think the thing here is, if he knows Piscatella isn't going to run, then he'd rather create a server that is all full of unknowns. Mm. So that, and it, we've seen that Piscatella's been pretty unwilling to run, so if we can create, if he can create a server of unknowns, especially with Piscatella having all these breakers out now, you know, mm. he can create a server of unknowns. I think this is, this is an interesting strategy. Mm. 
Which is interesting again because if Piscatella, uh, when you have all the icebreakers, you can safely run on any server. At worst, you lose credits. I mean, it stops him being able to calculate exactly how much he's going to need, but he can still get in probably most servers. Mm -hmm. And I'm still surprised that he hasn't played Compromise Employee. That cost him already two credits. Basically, the Compromise Employee would now be paying for himself. Yeah. We haven't seen any tracing this game, so that's not been an issue, but... Yeah, but uh, you you play against Whaler, you know there's going to be a Shadow somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. I mean, we, we know there's one on our at the moment. So. Yeah, we do, but he doesn't. But you have to expect it. There we go, I guess we're going to see... He's going to use to see what's in the archives now. Roaring. I'm surprised he hasn't yet took a look in HQ at LOL. That's the bread and butter of the, of the Gabriel. And we haven't seen any... Well, I mean, the only agenda that was scored was obviously Hostile Takeover, so you know that by now there's got to be at least one in there. Mm. We, know, we obviously know that he's held Project Atlas and posted, ba uh, is that? Yeah, posted Bounty to most of the game now. But. Wow. Um, I think the, I have the idea that Piscatella is um, making sure he cannot be flatlined before doing anything else. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, you're so secure, Yeah. I mean, even before you play Cat Crash Face and Copyright Employee, you, you're definitely secure enough to... Yeah, absolutely, I mean, at this point he's basically unflatlinable. Yeah. He, he, the, uh, the corporation would have to go to so much effort just to flatline him that I don't think it's even possible. Yeah, I mean, at this point, Wayland just says, you know what, if you want to play that game, we'll just we'll, we'll just play my game, we'll, do, we'll go the agenda route. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. The uh, thing that with the Wayland is like, okay, you... Defended completely against Flatline, so I'm just going to go for agendas. And at this point, um, Gabriel has wasted six, uh, three plus two f credits on protection. I mean, interesting. He put both decoy and crash space in as well, so I think he was really expecting to meet a lot of tags. Yeah, yeah. seems to be. That hasn't shown up. Um, what do you? What, what's the most interesting splash? We haven't. What's the most interesting splash we've seen so far? Um, I don't think I have seen any, any interesting splash. Yeah? It's like pretty, pretty classic splashes. So far, yeah. Nothing. I mean, the, the toll booth is most classic thing you can find in any corporation deck. And Chum isn't unusual for Wayland. So. Yeah, yeah. Chum on the Hadrians. That Hadrian is going to be possible to pass without breaking. Finally, he decides to go through. Ah. He does have the credit, so basically getting through that old booth costs him nothing. Uh, no, not, not true. He costs him three. I mean, worst case, worst case for Nerdy Cat here, then obviously he loses Project Atlas, but even that's only two points. There's still a long way to go yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Running HQ each turn now will cost him only three, so it's a really easy proposition. Edition. Of course, running HQ is pretty random at this moment. So. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, five cards. And he's not going to learn a lot when he sees Scorched Earth other than he's safe from it, so... Mm -hmm. We'll have to see, I mean... There you go. Yep, there's one. Still, information is information. Yeah. Uh, he should still really be running um, everywhere. He really should be running on every place mm -hmm. again. That R&D is open so long, it it's has to be full of agendas at the moment. I'm yeah, really, I I, I'm really expecting that the will start drawing agendas any turn now. I think if, if you know, if um, if Piscatella switches gears and just runs R&D constantly, I, I mean, if Nerdicat continues to draw no ice, this is going to be very alarming for the corporation. Mm -hmm. Where is she going? Oh, inside job. Where though? Um, HQ? HQ? Oh, that okay. makes so no he's sense. Well, he's, okay. he's kind, of, kind of saving some money. Yeah, but he's saving three, three credits. He's not even using his ability. You want to be doing that uh, inside job next turn. You know, make some money at least. But he gets one off death, bro. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, he got lucky. Well, that was, that was pure lucky, huh? Mm. But then he always is with the hand, so... On the other hand, um, uh, Sacred Voice does... Uh, uh, sorry. Um, Nerdicat doesn't really care about that because he's probably not even going to try to flatline anymore. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And it's only one point, so... Exactly. I, mean, I, often don't, I don't feel too bad. If I, if I know I've got an agenda in my hand early on, and I don't have enough ice, for example, to defend everything, 
if I, I'm happy to hold on to a one point agenda because I'm like at the end of the day it's one point so it could be you know there are bigger things you could lose so mm. it's not yeah, ideal right. to lose obviously but I'm, I, I'm a fan of taking a risk <laughs> mm. so now he's feel fairly secure to uh, start scoring that uh, thing I'm, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he actually over over uh, scores it and gets two or three counters on it yeah I don't Piscatella is not really in a place to get through Hadrian's yeah. wall here. Yeah, so. with two counters, Hadrian's wall is going to cost him nine every time. How much is it going to be? It's going to cost him seven to boost plus two yeah. to break. So nine credits just for one ice and plus four, three for charm. Or you could just do the nine for Hadrian. No, the seven. Is it seven for Hadrian? No, it says... Uh, Seven to go to strength if, nine. Uh, if, if, you, if you give, if you give, um, if you give, if you assume that he doesn't break charm. No, no, he breaks charm, but then Hadrian's wall has nine strength, so you need seven strength to push your corroder to, ni oh, to nine. Yeah, got the two uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That is a beast. That is a beast. He still has to run it to at least um, make him raise it, but. Uh, I mean, what, what's your opinion on Wayland's advanced for life at the moment? Wayland's advanced what? I mean, advance for ice. Are you a big fan of advancing your ice, or? Uh, it depends on the ice. I'm a really big fan of advancing um, the shadow when it's behind the thumb, for example, because it makes Nidza mm -hmm. have to push twice to break it. Hadrian's is always good to advance because it's already so high. There's very yeah. few things that can easily break it, and um, you basically guarantee with the Hadrian's that uh, its credit, its uh, boost you put on, is going to be uh, an extra click, an extra credit for the run at its run. Yeah, so it's a fairly equal payoff for both sides. Yeah, it depends. I mean, it, it will cost you two. The runner will have to make two runs on that server to make the cost of the Hadrian's back. So it just depends. If you use it with the Sipen for Kagua, it's pretty good. There's no reason not to. Mm. So we've got another compromised employee now. Mm -hmm. At least he'll make plenty of money from running. <laughs> He's going to expose to make sure. Even if he sees what it is, he won't be able to get in, though, with only four credits. Yeah. He could still run anyway, just to get two off compromise. He should, oh, no, he he should be running. He, he can easily yeah. break the sum. Can you advance the Archer? I don't remember. On which one? Archer. Uh, no, no, no. So he knows the second one is not an Archer. He should be running now. Probably just saying thing. I think he's realizing at this point that there's just no way, <laughs> mm. no way he's getting in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're nerdy cat here, are you are you bold enough to just leave it out there? I mean, you can do because it's so expensive to get through, and he can't make that money in a single turn. Mm. So you, you could advance it three times here and then just leave it. Only Steamhack would get him get in, but I don't know. Oh, if that's he... true. Yeah. We haven't seen much influence so far. Yeah, we've, we've seen Corolla. I think he's using uh, the influence for the icebreakers. Yeah. And his Nerdicat's going for the safe bet, it seems. Yeah. He's still got one counter. That's still pretty powerful. It's okay, it's okay. I don't know what he's going to do. I'm pretty sure he's going to use it to set for an archer now. Yeah. I would probably do that here. Because, I mean, you haven't seen any ice for a long time. Mm. So. And you put that archer in your big server and it's basically impossible now. Yeah, and he can just put any agenda he likes in there and it will just... Fine. Oh, he picked up a toll booth, I've seen. Wow. So he's got even more options. And he's just using clicks to get money. That's that's very un... inefficient, let's say. I mean, he's still got 19 cards. We've seen quite a bit of his deck so far. Um, there should still be quite a few money options left for him, Yeah. We've only, only seen one... We've only seen one... Um, what do you call it? He's done two short gambles and two easy marks. And one... Uh, one bank job. Yeah, one bank job and one of the other things, the um, code busting. So he should get oh, that, yeah, have at oh, least yeah. code busting, two more code busting. He trusts it. Why? I mean, okay, I understand that he can easily break it, but that's three extra credits each time. I know, I mean, you could have just put that on and you've got enough money to res them all as well. So. Oh well. I mean, I guess, I guess he just doesn't like... Um, the runner knowing what stuff is. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So just leave them guessing every time. Uh, right? Here comes, 
Here comes the archer. So that, that server is pretty much impossible for Piscatel to break. Piscatel should really be focusing on R&D. He knows that uh, uh, Nerdica uh, has put all his eggs in one basket. Yeah? So he really needs to be running R&D, trying to get in and make him um, score some agendas before he, it's too late. I mean, it's going to cost him 22 to raise everything on that remote server. <laughs> yeah, he does actually have the money, though. Yeah, he does, but I mean, if he were to run a few other things first, you could... Yeah, but I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, Nerdicat has only three cards in his hand. He can easily play Melanz next turn and just can yeah. score. Yeah. I think R&D seems to be the only thing left here. I'm expecting Piscatella um, to do a satellite uplink on the new two eyes now. I mean, he's got another special order, but we don't know if... Because he might also have Ninja in his deck. I know some runners like to use um, several... Have lots of different breakers. You know, two-century breakers. They can fem for quick passes. and Ninja mm. use, so. That's going to be... The fem is going to be uh, very, very good with the new cards. With the uh, test run. Imagine test oh, run, yeah. fem on the tool booth. Run next there. You can just use something else. Yeah. On the sneak door beater. He's playing a lot of things... Blind when he shouldn't, and a lot of things open when he should. I'm a big fan of like if you hold on, you know, if you hold your tricks in your hand, yeah, yeah. when you when you discover you can exploit the weakness. Right? That's your exact. That's exactly your uh, the strength of the runner. Yeah, you have yeah. you have to keep your tricks in your hand just before you use them. You don't play medium. You don't play medium and run next turn. You play medium and run three times the same turn. Yeah. And uh, the yeah. same goes for imp. I've seen people play imp the previous turn. Oh, he actually had a run. Didn't notice it. Yep, so we're going through archives to get to HQ here. I'm wondering how come he didn't raise Art Shadow because um, Femme could break it easily. I would still have raised it because then uh, next turn he would uh, cost him two. I mean, if he wants to keep using the arc, if he, if he thinks he's going to keep using the Sneak Door Beater, then he should probably just res those, res those here. Mm -hmm. And, I don't know, I mean, mm, you've seen Scorched Earth again. It's always horrible when you see the same card like four times in a row. And you're never sure if you have, if they have two copies in their hand or if you're just yeah. unlucky. I managed to, I managed to, play, I played someone once where they had like, three copies of Biotic Labour in their hand and I just, oh, I couldn't stop seeing it. it yeah, was unbelievable. I've heard the same thing. I once ran like five times and I kept seeing the same Biotic Labour. I was like, this can't be possible. How many yeah, you have? I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the new uh, one, the noise. Uh, what was the uh, the name of the um, nerve gas? That's going uh, to be interesting. That's yeah. going to be very splashable. I'm suspecting is Saber decks, which usually don't have anything to do in the HQ. I'm just taking a look. We've reached turn 31 at this point. Mm. I mean, what does what does Nerdy Cat feeling here? This is a situation I hate as the corporation, where you've got you know you've got everything set up, but you can't find any agendas. Like. I think he's, he's used his Project Atlas token here. He might actually pull an agenda. He didn't have to actually show him that. Why did he show him the card that he pulled? Ah, you have to reveal it. Right, right. Yeah, you do, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's aggressive negotiation. I'm not sure why he did. I mean, in that situation, I mean, or if you raise all your eyes, yeah, you have just enough um, uh, credits to prevent your agenda. But in that case, I would have played them a lot. You have the time to do it. Maybe he was afraid he's going to f finally wisen up and run L&D. But he took down the Milan here, so he's done. Yeah, you know, he's gone for the two bluff option. Mm. And he knows that uh, the runner is afraid to run. So. Um, I'm, I mean, can... mm. I'm pretty Sorry. sure the uh, runner will just now suddenly adapt like both of these cards. Now, does he have another one? He's used. To, uh, you see, we've already seen him use two already, so I guess Nerdy Cat wasn't suspecting perhaps a third as well. Mm. I mean, what's your opinion on satellite uplink versus infiltration? And do you think satellite uplink is going to be more important? Mm. I think. I think with a new card, it's going to be more important because people are going to be to start getting very afraid of hitting that. Um, what's it called? Edge of the world. Edge of the world, exactly. So yeah. also the sensei when it comes out. It's going to be very scary to see Zenteki cards on the table without uh, doing anything other with advancement or not. Yeah. Or the, it's oh, going to be yeah. funny because the safest cards to hit on Zenteki will be the ones that have one or two advancement counters. Anything else is going to be very scary. 
Well, this is going to be interesting. We might. I mean, even, we know, obviously know that he can't get into the remote server here, but. I mean, I'm always, at the moment, I'm a big fan of infiltration, but if, you know, if things continue to go, cause especially with the hostile assets that are being released mm. later in the series, then a satellite uplink might make its way into my deck eventually. I am actually a criminal runner by, as, as, by standard, so. He's running with a big go. one, with nine credits, yeah. oh, that's going to hurt. Yeah. That is going well, to hurt. I think he assumes that not all the ice can be big, but obviously we know it's all going to be huge, but... Mm. It's going to be hurt, it's going to hurt a lot if he if he passes that Olbuth and goes to the uh, Sado. Archer. Yes, yeah, Archer. It's going to be almost game over, I think. You could. Is there an option to not res the Archer here? This is interesting. I know I, I know why would you not want to, but I mean you could hold on to your one point from Hostile Takeover and not res Archer mm -hmm. here. I think he cannot. He wouldn't be able to break the Hadrians. It's true. So it makes sense to break the Hadrians. But on the other hand, the Archer is a sure bet because he's going to just trust two of his programs. And then you're... But, but you don't need to read the Archer because he can't get through Hadrian's here, can he? He doesn't have enough... Uh, yeah, but uh, he might be afraid of a steam hack later or something. There you go. That's he... true. And now you're screwed. I mean, that's why you don't, you don't want the, the, the corporation to prepare so much. Mm. I mean, yeah, he can't get through here. He can't get through. I mean, no way, no how. Yeah. I mean, what's he going to... I mean, what are you going to trash here? Are we probably going to get rid of... The, the good the icebreakers. Yeah. Leaf Fence as well. Dirty Cat was really worried. I guess he might get rid of the Mitchell Beater, but I don't think he's that bothered. <laughs> nah. He knows that at this point, he can any agenda he pulls, assuming he's got, you know, the free, the free remote service base, he can just play it straight off. So. Mm-hmm. That's uh, Let's hope when uh, our friend uh, Piscatella looks at this video, he'll see the mistakes that uh, he's uh, not running early on. I mean, especially with Criminal. I mean, with Shaper, some Shaper decks obviously don't mind sitting back for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Shaper decks are best at that. They're the best at the slow yeah. game. A Shaper deck at this point would be laughing, yeah, because it would have like 40 credits bunked yeah. and would be like, yeah, I laugh at your puny eyes. I've seen one deck like that when I was playing my first tournament. It was like, did nothing, didn't run for the first 10 turns, I think. Yeah. And uh, when I started trying to put a remote in, he was just running. He didn't even care. He didn't have to even advance the cards. He would just run. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the um, that's why they include Shaper in the sort of starting setup. People new to the game don't have to be as aggressive as they need to be. Mm -hmm. I think he forgot to take the money. Ah, he used it before. Oh, there we go. Ooh, nasty. Well, I think that might be the game over That's here. probably, yeah. I don't think Piscatale uh, can recover from this. I mean, we've reached turn 33, and I know the runner typically, you know, does a lot better as the turn numbers get higher. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I, there's a chance that, you know, I mean, I assume he's going to spend this ghost scoring Project Atlas. But there's a chance that, with only three cards in hand, if Piscatella, uh, I say focuses on... Oh, he can't get in, can he? Yeah. He, he doesn't have the money. Only a steam hack would help him if he had it last turn, for example. But now he needs to both play. Yeah, well, he does have a special order in hand, so he could fetch another Corroder. Oops, sorry. Sorry. Oh, well. thing. Um, he does have a special order in hand, so he could pick a. Uh, he could pick up a um. What's the word? Another Corroder, and then get through archives and just hope he can pick agendas out before they hit the table. Hmm. What did you, exactly did you press? Uh, I pressed a little, uh, <laughs> little pause icon next to, <laughs> next to the thing, on Nerdy Cat's thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I've always wondered, that I've, n I've never used the, um, the arrow, the, the start arrow thing. I know it tracks turns, but I've never worked out how to use it. I've always just pressed F1. Yeah, basically in the past you didn't have to use it. And uh, now I've automated, so you now you it's used automatically. So I know I know that nobody used it anyway. Yeah, I, I didn't. I wouldn't couldn't work out what to do. And I saw some people using it, and their turn number would come up, and I'd be like, oh, how do I do that? <laughs> mm. Just makes the the game easier to follow. Um, did you press it again afterwards, or did you? Uh... No, I just left it. It didn't change. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh. oh. No. What did he? 
Maybe something uh, went wrong because I think this button poses something, but it yeah. shouldn't affect the thing. Maybe he should have just hit F1 here because uh, Nerdy Cat just finished his go. I don't know what this button actually does if you press it. It has a little pause button. Have I ruined everything? Have I ruined everything? What you have. You're fired! Uh, I'm fired! Oh, I'm going, I'm going! <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go, there we go. It's fine. He just said press F1. I think uh, Piscatella might be panicking a bit. Who knows? Yeah. Wow! Okay. That, that was an interesting splash. Personal touch. That's usually for the ninjas. I haven't seen a ninja I mean, yet. He might have stuck it on Femme Fatale, I guess, but... Ah, uh, if he had, if he had, uh, if Nedicat had nine, k you know what would be awesome now? Have him run on the other remote server or the R and D, and then play FAO on his uh, Hadrians. That would really hurt. Ah, uh, yeah, but he doesn't know it's Hadrians, does he? He does, but he, he can suspect. I mean, what oh, what else could be su supporting his uh, main server? Could be a Sado, but come on. Ah, uh, but if we, if he suspects it, it isn't. All no, that don't do it! Don't do it now! Uh... No. Oh no, he stopped. Changing target. No! <laughs> Why is he so afraid to run? I don't get it. Uh, well, now that he's got no breakers, I guess. Uh, well, I guess all you can lose now is Vampetal and Sneak Doors. So... Oh, he's gone for it anyway. Mm. He's, so afraid of, okay. he's so afraid of running, I don't get it. And we're talking about it. If he actually ran first and then used it, he would have trusted. It's amazing. Yeah. Never mind. Well, at least he knows it's there now. At least he can. Is it? Is it more fun that he now sees his dude? Yeah, or... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, it's maybe it's more dis uh, discouraging now. Like, oh, I'm mm. doomed. On the bright side, there's always the second match. <laughs> there is always the second match, which does uh, support uh, the safe runner. We have to see. Yeah. The safe corporation, yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see, I, mean, I don't know if I'm casting the next match, but it'll be interesting to see how, you know, Piscatella plays as corporation here, so... Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's going to be as conservative as uh, when playing again as a runner. I think Piscatella should really try to play Saber. It fits more his playstyle, much, much yeah, more. Yeah. If he had actually, for example, a Lemuria, he would be able to... Uh, Run HQ, for example, and uh, expose as much as he wants. Yeah, I mean, interestingly, here, um, not that it's really much use, but I know I know a lot of people look for opportunities where this card would be useful. But um, notoriety, interestingly, is actually quite possible in this scenario. Mm -hmm. On HQ I again. Mean, would... uh, there you go. He doesn't even have. Ah, oh, he does have an agenda. Let's see if he's lucky. Yeah. Oh, oh, the needs sniped out of headquarters. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I bet Nerdicat, the, the funny thing is, Nerdicat's probably being quite annoyed now. <laughs> behind in agendas at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. You're like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. I did expect you to run to trust that melange, but. Uh... But I think that is, you know, his options here are if he can keep getting into HQ, if he can find another breaker to get through Toll Booth or, you know, Shadow and Ice Wall, if he can keep that pressure on HQ, there's still a chance he could pull this one back. Yeah, man, if he's very lucky, if he's very lucky. If he, yeah, if he's lucky, but. I mean, if he manages to score six points, it's going to be a, a good thing. I mean, he's go or even five yeah. points. Yes, he has a chance. Yeah. But then again, he's going to have to win as a corporation, which is not easy. Yeah, I mean, if you if you do score six points in the in, in the first game, obviously you force your opponent to have to win that second game, because, or at least tie, because you can't because uh, that you know the way the tournament matching works. Then. Mm -hmm. uh, well. Nothing else to do. Yeah, I think he's probably feeling like, "What do I do here?" Um, ah, some money, some oh, money. Some money. I think this could be a saver for him. Uh, without icebreakers, I don't think so. He's still got a special order, so I, I'm assuming there's at least one more copy of 
Corroda and Gordian Blade. I know that it's quite popular to only have a single copy at the moment for criminals, but mm. we'll have to hope that he's put a few more in his deck. Mm. I mean, he's only got 13 cards left in his deck, so... There's a lot of dead cards in his hand as well. Yeah. I think the... Um... Uh, the safe playing of uh, corpore of uh, runner actually cost him more. If he actually f ate face full of uh, archer at the start of the game, it would have been much easier for him. Yeah, yeah. No one worries about that. I mean, never worry about running no. into an archer in the first round because yeah, well, you're never going to run into an archer in the first round. But, okay. Actually, yeah. The the most annoying things to run at the first at the start is a katana. It might take out your the icebreaker. But uh, even, though, if, well, even though I know Enigma isn't, you know, isn't a significant loss, it's still really irritating when you know you run into an Enigma and you've lost a click, and you always feel like you've really lost out. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's one of the only ice that can actually hurt you in that initial round. Yeah. So. And uh, for some reason, people always know. I mean, when I, whenever I play Enigma, people just run with their last click. Whenever I play uh, Enichi, they run with their first click, and I'm like, how the hell do you know? Yeah. I, I always run like, on the, my first click on Enigma, and I'm like, oh, god damn it. If Nerdy Cat's watching the discards, by the way, then he'll just have seen Piscatella discard special order, which I think means we know that Piscatella's all out of breakers in his deck. So, Did he actually discard the special order? Yeah, if you scroll up, I've just seen him discard special order. Wow. So we know that his deck is now breakerless. Either that or, you know, he's hoping he'll draw one instead of having to play it. Mm. I'm surprised that we've seen very few icebreakers. I mean, I'm not sure you want to discard Special Order there, because now Nerdy Cats almost feels sure that he's safe here. So. Mm. I haven't seen actually a lot of influence on the uh, the, the runner yet. Yeah, uh, let's have a little look. Um, personal Touch is two, so if we assume he included at least two of it, that's four. Gordian Blade's three, it's four, seven. Frodo's two, nine. Frodo's two, nine. Frodo's two, nine. We've got six more. Mm. It should have at least one more Corroder and Gordian Blade. Oh, there's another personal touch. So, yeah, that's the second one. So, what's, um, Nerdy Cat has drawn a posted bounty here, so there's potentially another one point if he can find a way into HQ. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I'm not sure he can at this point. No, so. me neither. And that posted bounty is going to be scored very, very quickly now. I mean, what's he on? Two, four, six? Yeah. Nerdy Cat just cast score one. Does he actually put one counter? He can play it without any uh, tokens and then score the posted bounty and win. Yeah. Pis so I think we're just going through the motions here before the end of the match. Mm, Piscatella is just milling through his deck. I'm not sure what he's looking for. If he was looking for ice breaking, he had the, uh, the special order. Special order, yeah. Maybe he discarded a special order by mistake. Still uh, I'm suspecting another. he's uh, looking for the last uh, inside job. Or did uh, he play yeah. three? I'm not remember. Uh, I can have a look. I think you can look at the deck to discard without ten nine. One, two, only two so far. Okay. So, yeah, I think he's looking for the third. Yeah. And if he actually uses it to run HQ, now it's going to be a waste. Well, he might get what? Oh no, he's put them down. Oh yeah. I have to try and hit R and D to maximise his points here. Mm. Why this Avu? What is he wanting for? Maybe he's using that to get his icebreakers back. I think, I think if you're concerned, if you're concerned, that's not a bad call. I'm not convinced. Well, I, I did used to I did, I used to run Deja Vu in Criminal with only one one copy. Of I've seen uh, honestly I've seen such three icebreakers in the deck in the whole deck. Have you seen any more? I've only seen so far. We've only seen Gordian, Croda, and Tempestar. I, so. I think we're going to see an inside job on headquarters, which is going to uh, waste uh, the inside job this time. It'd be a magical moment here if he knew R and D was the place to go. Yes, he does run R and D. <laughs> It's a magical moment. <laughs> okay, let's see. Maybe he's very, very lucky. Well, if you look at the... Oh, uh, here we go. What's he doing? Nope, no. nope. Whatever he saw, it wasn't good enough. I mean, uh, if we look at Nerdy Cat's deck here, it's 22 cards deep. Um, still tw How many agendas have we had so far? 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
Yeah, six, six agendas. So there's still, I think the odds of finding an agenda in R&D at the moment, assuming he's got about 10, 11 agendas, still fairly slim, because it's four in 20, mm. but one in five. That's not that great. So. Yeah. GG. I guess at this but I guess at this point, it, yeah, I guess at this point it's just a case of doing anything you can to pick up another point. But yeah, that's it. I do. Th I have to, have to say this was a very uh, conservative give by Piscatale. He must be really afraid yeah. of being scorched. Yeah. Something, be, something must in his local meta may be very uh, scorch heavy because I see a lot of counters for that. Yeah, yeah. Too many. I think you could go fast. So. Okay, I'm going to uh, stop the recording now, um, okay, okay. and uh, I'll see you in the next match. Okay, then. Bye.